Hi, my name's Maria and welcome to my channel MH Books. In the background is Oscar. Um, today I am putting up my vlog for um, days one to three of Women in Translation. I start off with a little clip of Oscar choosing one of the books. I think I took this from a, a book tag about pets in the last uh, the last tag question was let the, the pet, usually a cat, choose the book. So this is Oscar. This is why I mute these things sometimes. He's normally locked out of the room. He's in the room today and allowed to choose the book. Because he's allowed to choose this book, look at him thinking about it, it's, you know, will you pick the blue one or the red one, the blue one or the red one, the blue one, and we'll get him closer to his reflection, so that's the one he wants. Um, yeah, so as he's chosen the book, he has decided he does not have to be put out of the room every single time I film at the moment, um, just for vlog purposes, and he will have his say sometimes in the background too. So welcome to Oscar's YouTube. All right. I finished reading my Adam Neville book, um, which is a thriller thon, but not a women in translation book. Um, I have filmed my tag video. It is now about three o'clock. It is twenty past three, and I am going to get someone to eat, and then maybe, maybe I'll get to pick the lovely book that Oscar chose for me. Yeah. He's given out because I haven't read it yet. <gasps> right, um, I'm reading, I'm hand holding this, I'm not good at hand holding. Uh, Irsa Sigda, la, 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 can't pronounce last names. Why did you lie? Um, and don't listen to this if you, if you don't like bad language. But think about this. Somebody has to translate this. So this is a scene of a, a domestic um, dispute that two officers have been called to. At this point, the caveman entered the room with Nina's colleague. The husband drawled that there was no need to get excited. They were married and could do as they liked. Neither Nina or her fellow officer bothered to try and correct his misconception. Then he offered them a drink, adding that they shouldn't waste their time on that bitch. She was a frigid, dirty, fucking boring, whinging cunt. And that's all one word. Frigid, dirty, fucking boring, whinging cunt. I should have probably should have done something to say, this is when the bad language is, because I know some people don't like it. <laughs> so, I'm just wondering... What was that in the original Icelandic? Do all the curse words have a direct translation? <laughs> Interesting. Crime novels are actually a pretty recent development because until about uh, 10 years ago, give or take, uh, crime fiction written in Iceland by Icelandic authors wasn't considered publishable really. If anybody wrote it, they would write it under a pseudonym. But then it all changed with uh, Arnaldur Indrelson because he, he, his books became quite successful for the Icelandic audience as well. And then all of a sudden, the publisher saw that, why, why not, you know, why, why, why can't the uh, murder mystery take place here as well as, uh, as anywhere else? Well, I finished. So this is Ir says she doesn't give a pronunciation of her last name, but she does give pronunciations for her characters to be, or the publisher does, for her book. Um, and it's Why Did You Lie? So it's, it's, it's a nice piece of crime genre rather than literary fiction. An awful lot of my translate works so would automatically be literary. Um, but this is nice um, crime genre. An easy read. Um, 
which particularly suited me the last couple of days. It's been stressful. I just, you know, if I, I'm showing this in the vlog, I probably have shown that I, I've started back with the commuting to work routine. Um, which is just shit. Um, <laughs> not work, but the commuting to work. And it's a lovely, easy enough read. Um, I'm going to use her or their publishers and um, translations here on how to pronounce the names. So this is the second Irsa book uh, I've read and they they have usually, and this is what you know, the last one and this one, have three different stories that don't sound like they're connected at all and they connect towards the end. Um, so the first story is we have Helgi and Helgi is a photojournalist. He's a bit overweight and subconscious about his weight and he goes to, and I'm going to insert a picture of this because it's a real place. I looked it up. It's a big rock in the middle of the ocean with nothing there but a lighthouse and a teeny tiny um, helipad and it's tiny. So this is a teeny tiny place that's smaller than most people's apartments where he goes. Um, he goes there with two other, sorry, three other people, two men and a woman. Um, they're going there to um, do some repairs in the lighthouse. He's there to take some photos. And the place it's called is Three Drown Gar is the pronunciation according to the pronunciation guide. But while they're there, um, somebody dies and strange things are happening and they unfortunately have, have some bad weather and they get stuck there. So they're kind of stuck in a very close environment. And so actually that's actually quite creepy to be stuck in the middle of the ocean. Hmm. The next story is Nina. And Nina is our wonderful um, police detective. That's the one where um, the little bit snippet I read that has um, um, the cursing in it. Uh, she has a... She, she's just, she's not widowed. She, her um, husband has recently tried to commit suicide and is in, a co is in a coma and is unlikely to survive the coma. And while she has also gotten into a, a bit of a dispute with one of her work colleagues, and so she's been put to um, working in the basement and clearing out old records. And when she's looking at the, in the basement, the old records, this is one thing about Irsa books, they depend on coincidence. She happens to come across uh, her, uh, the coincidence is explained by the way, but they do depend on them. Um, it comes across an old record of where her husband had been interviewed as a child as a witness, but all the rest of the record has, has gone missing. Um, and then the third story is it's Noe. I was pronouncing it Noe in my head, so it's, it's actually Noe, it's how it's pronounced. And he himself and his wife and his teenage son, who's a typical teenage son, have come back from a holiday swap where they did a house swap. Um, so they've just come back from Miami and then they get a little bit concerned about the American couple who'd stayed at the house. They leave some things behind and some odd weird stuff is missing from the house. Um, and they get a little bit concerned about what happens. He's more concerned than his wife is and his teenage son is, you know, a teenage son is going, you know, just wants to lie on the couch and play video games. So these three stories interconnect. Um, and as also, as I assume, I've only read two, Here's the books. Um, the result is going to be murder and mayhem, but it takes its time getting there. So if anybody would like to read one of these, I would suggest, I would recommend them. Um, they're fun, easy to read, um, dead simple prose, nothing too spectacular, just teeny tiny nice um, uh, descriptions of the characters, just need a little foibles of the characters to make them a little bit believable. The translation is terribly English. Oh, and there's a few little um, slang phrases which are very English. So if you like English crime fiction, you'll probably like this too because she's using the, or the translator is a male actually, isn't it? No, it's Victoria. So it's Victoria Cribb. So yeah, so she's used some lovely um, English phrases in this. And um, yeah, overall, I recommend it. So 
last book for Thrillerathon, first book for women in chat translation. I did warn you, I fly, sorry, I read slowly. The bird flies fast. And see you soon.